Hi, and welcome back to Climate Unboxed. Today I want to talk about how we make spatial averages of fields. Now, if you look online, you'll see lots of people have posted this kind of question, and often you'll see an answer posted giving a piece of code based on calculating the arithmetic mean. People suggest simply adding up the values in each of the cells, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to the n cells, and then dividing by the number of cells in the file. Now, the problem with that suggested solution is that in fact, it's absolutely wrong. And I'll explain the reason why. Now, when we have a regular grid of regularly spaced latitude and longitude points, it's easy to forget when we project that field onto a flat screen that in fact, it is not a flat surface. We are not living on a flat earth, that in fact, our projection from the globe, when we actually look at the original layout of the grid points, we can see that as we move towards the poles, the size of the grid cell changes. Let's look at this example here. Now here we have a globe of regularly spaced latitude longitude points. If we look at the grid cell that's colored red near the equator, and then compare it to a grid cell that's lying further north, we will see that the cells as we move further north become smaller and smaller inside because essentially the longitude points converge at the North Pole. This means if we want to take a spatial average, we need to wait by the cosine of the latitude. Now, it sounds like a minor point, but in fact, it can be quite important, especially if you're looking at a field which has strong spatial gradients in the latitude directions. Now, one example, of course, is temperature. Now, if we take a temperature data set uh, and average it, we will find that in fact, the differences can be substantial. The blue line, which constitutes the weighted average, is a lot warmer than the simple arithmetic mean. And this is simply the result of the fact that temperature is getting colder as you move further north. And if you look in the winter, when the temperatures are colder, the differences are far greater because the gradients are larger there and the differences can be up to five degrees, so they're not negligible. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to show you how to do a spatial average using climate data operators, and this actually accounts for the weighting uh, automatically. So now I can show you how we can simply calculate the field mean using climate data operators. So in this directory, we have our two meter temperature file, T2M, and now what I'm going to do is I am going to calculate the field mean using CDO. And the command is simply CDO field mean T2M, and then we need to think of an output file. And it is as simple as that. So there we go, 2.76 seconds. And now if we list the contents of the file, I'm listing it in long form with minus L. We can see we have a second new file and the file size is much smaller than the original global file. Now, if we look at this file using NC view, and there we have it, we have a time series of the global mean T2M temperature. Now, in CDO, there are statistical functions that we can substitute for the mean. So instead of just doing the field mean, we can, for example, calculate the spatial variance. Field for the spatial calculation of the statistic, but instead of mean, we simply substitute var for variance, and we have the input file name T2M and the output file name here T2M underscore var. Now, we have an error. The reason why we have this error, as we can see here, is that there is a problem with the precision. And that's because the data that's stored and actually passed from the climate data store is in a compact form. 
If we look at the file using nzdump t2m.nc, see that it's not actually a floating point, but it's stored as a short, which needs to be unpacked using a scale factor and an offset. In other words, we multiply the integer value stored here by this scale factor and then add the offset to get the full value. And the problem is when CDO tries to make a calculation, sometimes it runs into problems with precision. But we saw what the solution was up here. We can add the option minus B F32 or minus B F64 to turn it into a four byte or a eight byte double precision output. So let's just add that minus B F32 the function now works and we have another file which tells us what the variance is mcu t2m and here we have the spatial variance of course for a global field these values are very large so we've seen in today's video how we can with climate data operators cdo very quickly and easily calculate spatial statistics of a net cdf or grid stored field accounting for the underlying grid structure with changing cell sizes. Now, in addition to calculating the mean, just to remind you, you can substitute a whole host of other functions, such as calculating the maximum in space, the minimum in space, the variance and the standard deviation. You can check the documentation for the full range of mathematical functions that are available. So I hope you found the video useful and I look forward to seeing you soon on Climate Unboxed.